you may have been doing carbon accounting for a bit or at the start of your journey with it and going through the motions you perhaps even wonder what the science-based targets that comes very often into conversation with this what they are and why they matter well that's what i want to break down to you science-based targets or sbts for short they are like environmental goals for companies in essence, the measurable objective that you can set to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. That's all it is. Why they matter? It's because we know that companies, businesses play a big role in climate change. By the operations, products, services, and everything in between, we are releasing carbon and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And we have those emissions. So SPTs are not just random numbers or like a big framework or something like that. They essentially based on solid science and climate research. Where leading scientists and organizations like the IPCC are helping to determine what's necessary to try to mitigate climate change. And the ultimate goal is to align with the Paris Agreement, which aims to keep global warming below 1.5. That's 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. It matters, although it may sound like little degrees, half a degree in Celsius, the consequences are rather troublesome. So for example, let's just take a moment and look at some of the 1.5 versus 2 degrees. And we are just talking some very few items like sea level rise, heat wave, the full melt of the Arctic, the ability to access water, habitat loss. So all of these things also have knock on effect into others and in between them. So setting science-based targets means that companies are committing to reduce their emissions according to what science says that's needed. So science-based. That's where your target's based on. Good name. Now, how do you find those targets? Well, there is the initiative, Science-Based Targets Initiative, or SBTI, you may have seen it, which is a group of organizations that are working together to make sure that the targets are ambitious, they are transparent and fundamentally contribute to reduction of climate change. They even came up with a net zero standard to guide companies towards reducing emissions to practically zero by 2050. Remember, that's the goal. So you have a specific guidance for your company, for your type of company, for your industry, and you can access directly from the SBTI website. Put a link in the comments. Now wait, going through the motions to reduce emissions to practically zero, you may have heard about the scopes of the greenhouse gas protocol. Scope one, scope two, scope three. And I just wanna take a moment to clarify very briefly what are those buckets of scopes. So the scopes are different categories of emissions that a company has to consider. I like to move away from the name of scope one, two, and three because it gives the sense that is an ordered list where you will start with the number one, following with number two, and then finally number three. Now, if we rename them a bit, scope one is what you burn. That's emissions from stuff that your company directly controls, like you know your own bake, also what you burn in to generate a particular manufacturing item. Scope two, which is what you buy, are emissions from the energy that you purchase, like electricity, contracts, and things like that. And then scope three, which we can call it beyond includes all indirect emissions from a company 
including supply chain and many other things. It's a very dangerous miscellaneous bucket of the other bucket when everything else goes in there. In fact, the scope three, the beyond, has 15 different categories within it. So remember what you burn, what you buy, and the beyond. Briefly on the scopes. Now companies, what they do is set targets to reduce their emissions in both in the short term and in the long term. So going back to the science-based targets, achieving net zero, what means is that emissions are very, very low. And any remaining, yes, are removed from the atmosphere. And there are a couple of ways to look at that. Now, science-based net zero can only be achieved through emissions reductions of at least 90%, that's a nine zero, not by carbon offsetting. So each organization, country and individual, right? You can downscale and upscale these ideas is to tackle on production, volume and consumption. So yes, company can use methods like direct air capture or nature-based projects to remove those last very few emissions. That's really the key point here is that you can't claim net zero until you actually cut emissions by at least 90%, by at least, not just by upset. And the science-based target initiative, net zero standard, is there to demonstrate that companies have a credible and transparent approach to one, calculate the emissions, and then having really clear strategies for reducing their footprint. The standard also requires regular reporting and disclosure of those emissions and progress towards that meeting net zero target. And yes, for small and medium sized businesses, there are simplified pathways to set targets, maybe makes it easier to grumble. Although I particularly wouldn't recommend going to the easy pass because as most often those exemptions is where the most impact could be made and i'm talking about the beyond scope three if you're going to go through the motions of setting science-based targets you have sort of three main steps the first one is setting near-term science-based targets that means that by 2030 which is at the time of this recording, six years away, you are going to have a reduction of at least 95% of your scope one and two, 95. And then a reduction of at least 67% of the scope three emissions, if that scope is greater than 40% of the total emission. So that's near term, that's in six years. Step two is sort of, long-term of science-based targets so that you reduce the further emissions to a residual level by 2050. And that also includes the scope three by 90% at least. And then the last one, you probably guessed it, is that you get to the end of the pathway of company 11 net zero. And at that point, you have to have achieved the above. And then you're gonna have 10% maximum or less of what's called residual emissions that you have remaining. Where at least it should match if not exceed, meaning you're going through a path of being a carbon sink with permanent physical removal. And again, physical removals can take different Thanks, so maybe we can cover that another time. Now, who and how you set officially those targets? How you show your commitment is you joining the initiative and you submit your commitment letter. And the process involves understanding your emissions, defining your target and choosing the right pathway, including where you're gonna set your boundary I can put some links in terms of organizational boundaries as well. And the baseline emissions inventory, right? How you're going to be comparing from which year. And on that, 
you're gonna need to have before you submit your commitment letter and sign up and all of that you're gonna need to have a verifiable process of account team for your carbon and that's a scope one two and three right you're gonna need to have data available that data and that baseline year needs to be representative of your typical sort of greenhouse gas profile you're gonna need to have sufficient forward-looking ambition to make meaningful reductions is pointless otherwise going through the motions and you're gonna need to be consistently hitting and reaching towards that net zero by 2050. Only when all of the above is in motion, then you can submit the target for validation. Now, it's worth noting that submissions and updates have costs. Also, governance, disclosure, and compliance are key stones on all this process. This is where impact comes to play. I don't want to put any of oh, you might be wondering why bother with all of this. There are many benefits like future-proofing your business, saving money, improving your reputation, being more efficient. Arguably, the most important is all the innovation opportunities because throughout this process, many things will bubble up, many things will emerge. Plus, it helps you exceed regulatory requirements. These things are coming down the line, happening a lot in the financial sector at the moment. So it's better, in my opinion, to get ready now because the regulations are coming and are coming fast. So science-based targets and just numbers is a powerful way for businesses to help control their impact, to help combat climate change with the aim to restore possibilities of essentially a better future not only financial benefits but also is social and natural capital and responsibility I like okay hopefully that clarified all the science-based targets what it is how is accounting what do you need beforehand what would you need throughout the process and how do you go about once you're ready if any questions anything else on the matter on the subject just pop some comments and we'll take it from there. See you soon.